Blog Talk Radio. Mother's Day, my fabulous, magical tribe of beautiful people. Welcome one and all to another episode of Magic Universe with Sharona. Woohoo! And this is your magical mama, Sharona Rapsick. And I am coming to you live from the Big Apple, New York City. And I'm so happy that you are joining me today. And just want to let you know that tonight, when you look up in the sky, we have a waning moon in Sagittarius, which means that our lovely moon is starting to grow smaller. And this is after the full flower moon in Scorpio that happened this past Thursday. This show is all about creating magic and miracles in all areas of our lives by using angel guidance and the divine conscious energy of the magical universe that we all live in. This show is brought to you by the Psychic Talk Radio Network. That's the radio network with spirit and Psychic You. So please visit, if you get a chance, www.psychictalk.net to learn more about our past and upcoming radio shows, our hosts, as well as our online courses that we offer at Psychic U. This show is also brought to you by the IAAP. That's the International Association of Angel Practitioners, which is the very first worldwide organization that was formed to educate, celebrate and support spiritual practitioners and practitioners and entrepreneurs around the world. So please go to www.angelpractitioners.com to learn more. And finally, today's episode is also being sponsored by the ARE of New York City, a nonprofit organization that was formed by a group of service-oriented volunteers, all inspired by the work of America's psychic, Edgar Casey. To learn more, go to www.edgarcaseynyc.org. Remember, that's Edgar Casey with the Casey spelled C-A-Y-C-E, followed by N-Y-C. Magic Universe with Sharona is a live call-in radio show where we talk about such topics as angels, crystals, energy reading, tarot and oracle cards, the cycles of the moon, holistic healing, the laws of attraction, and lots of good, good vibrations, and much more. Magic Universe is on the air, always on the second and fourth Sunday of each and every month. So you can listen to our show on psychictalk.net on your internet browser, but you can also call in and listen in on your phone, which reminds me to tell you that this is a live call-in show. So if you would like a mini reading, an angel message, or just ask a question or add your comments to today's topic, or even just to say hi. The number to call is 714-816-4628. Once again, that's 714-816-4628. That's to listen. But remember, if you want us to answer your call so that you will be live on the air, you need to also press the number one on your keypad. That You'll do that after you dial in the number. And this will flag us on the switchboard so that we know that you want us to take your call. 
And we do take the calls in the order that they are received. So don't hang up because you will lose your spot in the queue. And you can also go to www.thetarotguild.com forward slash chat and go to the Tarot Guild website. It's free to join. And there we have a little chat room, so I'll be checking to see if there's any uh, questions that will be coming into the chat room. Okay, folks, um, it's time to start. Woohoo! Today we are going to be uh, talking about how we can add some more magic into our daily life. Uh, we're going to be talking about the magic of coloring. So after this show, you may want to get yourself a coloring book, grab some crayons, colored pencils, and markers. That's because coloring induces the same mindful state as meditation. In fact, some say it even forces the two hemispheres of our brains to communicate enabling you to become better at organizing information and problem solving. And it's relaxing and stress. Plus it's fun and it makes you happy and you'll start to feel like a kid again, which is really good. Today, we are also lucky to have a returning guest joining me. Her name is Athena Duggan. And Athena is a renowned fashion stylist. She's also an award-winning professional artist and designer. Um, in fact, she's like a diamond. She has so many facets. She is also a coordinator and regional representative with the Labyrinth Society. And she is also one of the founders of the adult coloring pages on Facebook. Athena is also a crafter, um, tarot reader, and she regularly does coloring, and you can actually meet up with her and her friends on Saturdays when they do a virtual coloring group meetup online. And I need to let you know something, full disclosure, I'm also a member of this Facebook coloring group. So, Athena, welcome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. So great it's to great have to be you back. Here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, is, um, I guess we should get get into the topic, right? So, yeah. Uh, why? Yeah, and why do we color, and why are coloring mandalas especially beneficial? Oh, my gosh. Mandalas are amazing for, for coloring because they're like a meditational tool, you know, and it helps you get to uh, the center of you, you know, and, and it's just great how um, – it's like it's like getting to the path to the center of yourself. You know, it's it's almost like that labyrinth. You know, the purpose is to find your center, and with that mandala, is you're like getting to that center of your own psyche. So you're like exploring. You know, even uh, Carl Jung thought you know the mandala's purpose was to. Uh, you know, get to the center of your psyche or exploring your psyche or, or just transforming. So it's it's such an amazing um, and healing, uh, you know, uh, object. It's such a strong symbol that even the Native Americans, you know, use the, the uh, designs as medicine wheels and shields, you know, and, the, and even in the Celtic tradition, like they had a lot of woven cloth tapestries that often included a lot of mandala-like motifs. So, you know, you can find them in like Gothic cathedrals, you know, and a lot of these were circular designs. So it's it's like when you look at them, they really, really invoke something, you know, in, in the mind and they invoke the, you know, invoke calm. And even like that's the same process, like when you're coloring them and when you're drawing them, you know, they're so full of symbolism and even color, 
you know, the color can can predict like what you're creating with this mandala. You know, it, it, it you can attract abundance. You know, health. You know, love. You know, just by like focusing on the mandala and the colors that you you know when you're coloring it. So it's it's really um it's really such a uh, magical naturally magical thing like even when the uh, buddhists you know when they would create them a lot of them they made a, a lot of their mandalas from colored sand because it came from nature and it could re- be returned to nature so um you know and that was uh keeping with their philosophy so you know the mandala was a sign of a of you know temporary nature of life so you know, they were taken apart as soon as they were completed, but still you can find a lot of uh, permanent sand mandalas. You know, sometimes they're hung in temples or monasteries or in private homes. But going back to coloring them, it's like we can get that same effect, that same getting in touch with ourselves, getting to the center of that energy, you know, and, and like I say, it's just such a, uh amazing and great pastime to have you know, coloring and and coming to a point of self discovery. You know, through coloring the mandala. Yeah. And the great thing about it is that you don't need to know how to color. You don't need to know how to actually draw one. Just just do it. You know, because it spirals. It's, it's almost like a art. It, it's an artistic activity that can be almost like your own spiritual ritual. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I know that um, I actually looked up that the word Mandela in Sanskrit means circle. Mm-hmm. So I thought yeah. that was kind of cool. You know, you you wonder what the word means. And, um, yeah, I love doing them uh, because, you know, they besides being a tool for stress relief and creativity, I actually think that um, – it enables your your uh, problem solving skills, you know, as you're picking your colors and you know doing all that. If there's a question that you have, you can just start uh, working on a mandala and coloring away, and it's kind of like the divine will communicate with you. Do you find that to be That's true? Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's such it it evokes such deep like uh, you know it, it expands your consciousness. So it's it's almost like yeah, why not? And especially when you work with colors, colors are so symbolic of emotions and and things like that. So it's like yeah, when you're coloring them, you know it's it's like you're almost putting your intention, even if you can't find an intention at first or just the the action of coloring the mandala just automatically brings that state of calm you know so it's like whatever color you know you you choose you know it's 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 speaking it's it's working in your subconscious you know it's helping you to expand that you know and get to the the point of it yeah yeah and um I guess you know the tools that you use if you, is just you can get you can get an actual uh, mandala coloring book and just grab some crayons or markers oh, yeah. and you can just go to town. Uh, I know yeah. that um, you know there it's easy to find mandala coloring books. You know you can just um, you know order them you know, from Amazon, or if you're lucky enough to have a art supply store or craft store uh, that's open by you, um, kind of hard yeah. right now, but I know that <laughs> stores are opening up, but, you know, you can get stuff delivered uh, from Amazon. You just grab a coloring book and, and, and go to town. Oh, and, no. um yeah, or you can just start doodling. It's it's funny, you know, they say you can just grab a, a compass or, you know, just start, you know, drawing geometric patterns. And exactly. Cause create your own. Exactly. 
and you don't need the great thing about it is that you don't need experience you know you can create a mandala just start with a circle and like you said it's, it's all doodling you know if you want to make a little you know a cup there and you know a cup on one side cup on the other you know basically it's like you're creating balance within that circle and that's that's like the the natural you know, a natural state that of what people do. You know, they like if you put a square on one side, you want to put a square on the other side. You know, or even you want to put something in the middle, like, you know, a butterfly or something, you know, like maybe that's, you know, something symbolic for you, you know. So it's it's just really interesting that, you know, no experience is needed. You know, you can create like a mandala just with a circle or even putting a square or a T in the middle. You know, it's amazing like how um, you can just, you know, invoke these natural uh, creative energies. And it's like you don't have to be an artist. Just have the intention or even not even the intention. You're just letting yourself go. You know, just not putting yourself into any any <laughs> boxes or anything, you know. Exactly. Yeah, and it's amazing that Carl Jung, you know, um, one of the pioneers of modern psychology, you know, talked about this and um, talked about the benefits of it as far as relieving anxiety and panic attacks and worry and, and all of those things which you know yeah. I think a few of us might be going through some of those worries right now and one of the things you can do is just start coloring away exactly yeah because even with uh, Carl Jung like he used to uh, like he thought that the mandalas created like you know spontaneity in in your dreams or waking life you know, it was like he thought they were conscious attempts to heal, you know, to heal oneself or, you know, to impose order on your psyche. So it was really, really interesting. Even when he, um, I read that he used to make mandalas, he used to create one each day so he can observe his, you know, observe how his psychic transformations were from day to day. So, you know, so for him, he concluded that the mandala was a universal archetypal form, which is which is great. You know, it represents the you know the self and the world. So when you think about it, when you sit down to draw this, you know, and like Carl Jung thought, it's all about expanding your consciousness. It's all about being in that state of of being, being yourself. You know, and being in that state of uh, relaxation, you know, especially when you're making, creating these uh, circular repetitive patterns, you know, that's creating a state of calm and a state of, of you know, it's, it's taking you out of that state of anxiety and definitely creating a calmness, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I find, I, I guess everyone does it the same way. I always start at the, in the middle you know, and just kind of work outward. Is that, mm -hmm. um, do you recommend that as a way to, you know, like, because a lot of times if there's a, you see one on a page and, and you go, oh my goodness, where should I begin with it? And mm -hmm. usually, you know, it has a center part and then you, you work out from there. And, um, you know, it's almost like being at the middle, at the at middle of a labyrinth and then you work out and then, yeah. You, know, you can work back in once you start seeing that a pattern is taking place. Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, I would suggest, I mean, there's no right way or wrong way to do it. But, um, yeah, the center, because you're working from the inside out, that's, you know, you're working from the inside out. So you go to the center and work outwards because when you're in the center, you could sort of see like everything all around you. So when you think of a mandala, you're in the center, you know, you're in the center of the circle or the center of that square. You can sort of see where you want to put those other compartments or want to put those other things as where with a labyrinth, you're just trying to get to the center. You're trying to find your center, you know, so, um, 
you know, and that you're connecting to your center. So it's kind of interesting, you know, mandalas are more like art forms, labyrinths are look like art forms that you can walk or, you know, and do the same thing. You're expanding your consciousness. So um, it's, it's interesting how how they both are great, powerful spiritual symbols and how you can use them, you know, differently. You know, and they're both, like, engaging you in, you know, self-discovery. Yeah, and I guess, you know, whether you're walking that labyrinth or coloring, there is a movement that goes on in your brain. You know, like whether you're moving yeah. with your feet or moving with your eyes, and, yeah. you know, things um, start to happen, and it's it, it gets kind of hypnotic and, <laughs> yeah. you know, relaxing. Yeah. And yeah. I actually love doing it, you know, for people that are uh, into, like, iPads and stuff. I, I love doing it on an iPad, you know, where you can mm-hmm. – um, you carry it around with you and 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 do it that way. But um, I have to admit, I'm a doodler too. And when I doodle, mm-hmm. I tend to, you know, start with something in the center and then start working outward. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's funny. I find myself doing that too. Um, I when I doodle, I I either work from the center or or. I'm in the center, and then I, like, yeah, I draw all around it. And it's it's different, like, even when I'm coloring a labyrinth or, or walking a labyrinth. The thing about the labyrinth is that it has turns and winds. You know, it winds and it turns. You're not going to get lost. It's universal. So if you're coloring a labyrinth, you're going to stay along that path. Or, or if you're walking a labyrinth, you're going to keep along that path, as with um, a uh, – mandala when you're looking at it as an art form your eye is sort of following the pattern you're following the pattern of the color and see where it goes and it's not really going to twist off into a different direction but either way you're not going to get lost so it is that <laughs> kind of hypnotic like you say it's that hypnotic um you know repetitive pattern that's bringing about that you know that meditative meditative state Definitely. And I guess I should say, I mean, you don't, uh, just coloring in itself, you know, whether you're just, you know, coloring uh, pictures that you like, it doesn't, you you also get benefits from that too. You know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun to do. And uh, you're kind of embracing your inner child. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do you, pretty amazing. Yeah, I was just wondering though, when you do your uh, mandalas, because I know when I'm coloring my mandalas, I like I find myself like setting aside all the colors. I said, well, let me set aside the rainbow colors first, and then let me see. Sometimes I start with my background first, so sometimes I'll like put a dash of color, like wherever, like in each section. I say, okay, I'm gonna color this one, this color, and color that one this color but it's it's interesting do you find yourself do you have like a a a set way that you go about coloring your mandalas yeah and i guess i should say you know both you and i were trained as artists and designers so Mm -hmm. it's kind of i think we're going back to that where they kind of teach you to start with the color story just rather than just um you kind of plan that first and and how that's going to go together and work with that and add into it. But you kind of do start off with uh, a certain color scheme. But, of course, there's no right or wrongs. I mean, you can just grab every every color as you feel like it. But I have a feeling that yeah. planning goes back to our training. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, you're right. You're I, right. I, fall I, into I totally that. agree. Yeah, you know, you know, so I do find – and I guess this is where the psychology part comes in. You know, I'll say, um, do I feel like working with a warm color palette today or a um, cool color palette today? And I've also worked with just you could work in a grayscale, you know, where you're basically working with, you know, white, black, and a grayscale. So I guess that says something about um, – 
you know, you could you could use that as a thing to find out where you're psychologically going. But sometimes I think a lot of when I when I start doing that, I think, oh my goodness, that's my design teacher made me do that. <laughs> or or when I was you know working in the garment center as a fashion designer, it was like yeah. we kind of planned our color swatches first, and then we yeah. kind of started coloring. Uh, so I don't know. That's wow. all part of <laughs> organizing yeah, everything, right? That's always the the fun part too. I think too is just setting down, looking at your color pencils, getting your color scheme together, and and you know the great thing is going back to you know there's no there's no right way there's no wrong way to to color your mandala if you want to do all blues or you know all the same hue i mean that's fine you know and it's just it's just really interesting what the colors represent and what some mandalas represent like i said if you want to create that some symbology of putting a a butterfly in the center maybe you're creating a a mandala for transformation you know, and you color your butterfly all different colors, you know, those are the things that, you know, you're coloring with intention, you know, and at the same time you're in this meditative state because you're, like, repeating this, you know, repetitive motion of of coloring, going around in the circle, and then you're creating, coloring the symbol, you know, the butterfly. So it's, like, really interesting. I mean, I I just think that's all, like... um, it's all like it's really amazing. It it sort of reminds me of, you know, when you color the the labyrinth. When I color the labyrinth, like well, the chakra I color the labyrinth. Sometimes if it's a seven circuit, you know, because seven there's seven chakras. I color it the color of the chakras, you know, in which they do have labyrinths that are the color of the chakras. Those are representative of the energy centers, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they're all, those colors are all aligned with um, the chakras. They also are aligned with different archangels, all of those different things, and also tarot cards. And, you know, one of the things that we do on the air is, before I start taking calls, is I like to draw a card. And I know that you're a a tarot reader, too, like me, among your many... Uh, skills and I just you know I'm I'm always blown away by tarot cards Um, would you believe it the card that I just randomly pulled is the Empress Um, oh wow it's mother it's Mother's Day yeah yeah apropos (laughs) so like I you know certainly that's one message that uh, we can uh, tell everyone listening out there do you have any thoughts about the uh the empress card too with a message as far as uh a card today for all of our listeners yes this is the perfect day for when you look at the empress she's like in a in a, in a beautiful garden scene and it's such a time for growth it's like celebrating new life just newness everything's new everything's bright it's it's growth it's expansion you know um and it's it's nurturing so it's like be good we have to be good to ourselves you know today whether yeah. we're mothers or not we're mothers of cats we're mothers of something right <laughs> we're oh, nurturing, yeah. always nurturing yeah and uh yeah, and we need, and I also, I often think too of her as being Mother Earth. So um, yes. we need to honor um, Mother Earth and um, how she, uh, need, you know, she's she's helping us so much. So we just need to honor and and you know take care of her too. Yes. Yeah. But I, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I, you know, I said, I can't believe that I pulled the Empress card. <laughs> no, so, that's amazing. Tina, yes. Um, for people who are listening out there, um, how can people, 
I know you just wear many different hats and you do many different things. How can people get in touch with you if they're interested in uh, the, all the wonderful things that you do? Oh, wow. Okay. They can get in touch with me at Athena Dugan at gmail.com. Um, kids find me on Facebook at uh, uh, Unicursal Energies on Facebook, um, or they could, I don't know, uh, yeah, those are like the best bets where they can find me or get in touch with me for, you know, anything crafty-wise, or they can check out Earth Energies on Etsy.com. That's my uh, jewelry and and wood burn boxes and things like that. So there's a few avenues where they can contact me, and, and I'll get back to you. Awesome. Okay, well, you know, it is time to take some phone calls, and I am going to go over to the switchboard, and uh, the caller that's been waiting the longest is calling from Area 646. Caller 646, um, what is your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, she must be in listening mode, so I'm just going to put her back. Are you, wait, I just heard something. Hello? Okay, I'm going to put you back in listening mode. And I'm going to call her on uh, area code 917. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hi. Isadora? Hello. Hi, Hi Isadora. I know that voice. How are you today? How are you? I don't know what I'm doing with this call or that I could even talk, but since you were, I'm doing a, something here and I find <gasps> that I, I don't know anything about mandalas other than I saw it was on the books and I always do cat ones, as you know. But I, I got one that was just flowers from a serenity coloring book that I have. And mm-hmm. so I'm working on that now. And it is called, awesome. so I started from the center. I never knew about starting from the center. I didn't know there was a an advice kind of thing. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Good but to have advice. you calling us. Great I, to hear your voice. And um, do you want us to draw a card for you? Okay, but I have no idea how to retrieve it or read it because I'm looking at a black screen on my phone. Well, you're not going to (laughs) see it, but, you know, what we do. I'm very very pre-K with uh, technology. Hey, you have to start someplace. I mean, you can just, you know, jump right in and not be shy. You know, it's... You can't make a mistake, right, um, Athena? Yes. Absolutely. There's no there's no mistakes. Right. So I am joining you and listening, but I didn't know I could even talk. But then when you were looking for somebody with 917, because I did it, and then I didn't know what I was doing, and then I redid it because I didn't know what I was doing, and I pressed 1, and then I got through to you. All right. Well, that's, well when you put the 1, you know what it does? It, it raises your hand on the switchboard. So if you don't hit one, you know, I won't, I won't necessarily go to the call, but it's, it's interesting. Um, I did draw a card for you today. Do you want to, I don't know whether you're into tarot. You can't see me. I drew a card for you. Do you want to know what that is? Yeah. Um, Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a really, you know, it's really um, interesting. It's the magician. And oh, wow. that, yeah, that card means that you have, you have a lot of uh, tools that you can use to do whatever you want. You know, you, um, you can be successful at a lot of things, Isadora, and you can manifest. That's like a manifesting card. And you, whatever, you know, what's kind of cool about it is, Whatever pops into your head will appear in your life. 
so that's pretty good. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I find yeah. the coloring, I didn't think I had ability. Okay, I was a musician, a violinist, mostly just tired now. And, but I always wanted the ability to draw, and I didn't seem to know how to have the drawing skills to make this or that. But coloring is such a wonderful way that I only have done recently. It's such a wonderful way of being an artist with the, uh, a drawing, but you don't have to know how to make the flower or the tree correct or the person's face correctly. You could just use the creativity with the colors and your little pattern making. And it's calming, yeah. like you say. Because I wasn't I haven't been able yet to get into meditation, but I find it's I have to sort of do it out of context of only with a group. Because I have all these coloring books and I tend to only do it when I'm with a group. But I think I have to kind of encourage myself to do it without a group as well. Well, you definitely can do that. I mean uh, it's fun to be know, part I of a group, and then you can finish what you start with the group. I, I I find that when I'm with a coloring group, I might start something, and then, you know, I'll come back to it later on. So you can, well, you can, yeah, you can work it both ways. It's a group. Athena, do you? I did a new one. And then, cool. and then I worked on one that I had started that was more detailed, and I finished oh, that's that great. one. And then I saw awesome. the third, you know. Great. Awesome. So that's the card I pulled for her was the nice Seven of Pentacles. Because, because we're more um, isolated to have this to do while we listen to the terrible news station, whatever's going on, you know. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The, the awful uh, nonsense that we keep hearing. So, Isadora, could I ask you a question? So, when you're coloring your cats, though, and when you're with the group, do you feel a sense of calm? Do you feel, how do you feel when you're you're coloring with the group? I mean. It's, it's soothing or calming. Yeah. Because I, 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 I did this coloring a while back, um, or like art therapy I've done, mm-hmm. like after my husband died, and another time years ago. I found out stuff by doing art therapy that I didn't learn, you know, about my anxiety and stuff. And I find that artistic activities, even if you don't have skills to make a portrait or whatever, okay? So my daughter went to art school and she could do fantastic things, but I could still express myself because I'm not doing it for a grade or anything, but I have to learn. I bought all these markers and pencils and cray- crayons, and I have all these books I keep buying. And I have to kind of do it in addition to the once a week thing. Or now we don't. We're doing it now uh, uh, with the with the um, with the vid- video thing. Or I doing it once a week when we were doing it at the library. So it's good. Uh, it's it's very uh, good. I think. Great. If you can't do other things, you know, I think so. And I guess, and then in the apartment, if you have the the, the coronavirus, one thing, but you can't give it to anybody. (laughs) I could give it to my (laughs) pencil. Or, oh, my cat was here, but she said, she said, okay, I'll talk to you later. (laughs) Well, we want to say hello to your cat. Yeah, I think Athena had a card for you, and then I'm going to put you back in the queue. Athena, did you have a card for Isadora? Yes, I pulled the Seven of Pentacles, which is, you know, watching or you've you've reaped the, um, you're making progress. You're watching it grow. It's steady going, but it's slow going. So there's progress that's happening, you know, and it's, 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 organic you know it's it's what you're making it's it's abundant progress so it does for me the seven of pentacles doesn't always point to money but it 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 points to things that you've invested in that you're watching them grow and they're happening so it's something steady it's taking a little longer do you expect it but there's steady growth that's happening so it's abundance that's you know happening in more than one way so 
Thank you. You're using some terms, though, that I don't know what they mean, but I guess this time I'll learn it. <laughs> We're referring to this is that, and that's the other, you know. Okay. Well, we could talk about okay. this for some other time. Okay. Um, I'm going to put you back in the, I love in the... It. So I enjoy that, doing that. So it could be a mandala, oh. but it could also just be my cat. There's no right and wrong. Sounds like a plan. Uh, I'm going to put you back in the queue, and uh, I want to, you know, time really flies by. I want to make sure that I let people know um, about the shows that are coming up on our network, um, because it is, we're past the bottom of the hour. So on the Psychic Talk Radio Network tomorrow, I want to let you know that we have two radio shows. One is going to be at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. I want always let people know that our radio network is worldwide, so you can always go into the website and it'll give you the time that things are going to be happening. So let's just I'm going to stick with uh, Eastern time right now. So. At 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, there's a show. It's called Wisdom of the Soul Show, and that's with our host, Janice Fuse. And late following that, at 2 p.m. Eastern, there is the Compassionate Light Show, and it's about healing and guidance from the angels. And that is with Catherine Hahn. And next Friday, May 15th, at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have a show that will be returning to the air. They were um, on vacation for the past couple of weeks. It's called The Doctors Are In. And that's a show with Dr. Rose Wilkerson and Dr. Dax Carlisle. And, of course, they are talking and doing uh, tarot readings live on the air. And then next Saturday, which is May 16th, we also have another show that will be returning, and that's going to also be with uh, Dax Carlisle and Mary Brown. And the show is known as Tarot Today Radio. And you can call in, and they can also do a reading for you. And this show, Magic Universe, will be back in two weeks. So I'll be back again on May 24th, and I'm going to be talking all about how you can raise your vibrations using essential oils. And I'll be talking about, you know, just exactly what raising your vibrations are and how important that is to do. So, uh, Athena, let me see if we have some more calls that we can take. Remember, you need to uh, hit... uh, the one on your keypad after you call in, and that way your hand will be raised, and I know that um, you want me to take your call. So I am going to go to area code 610. Area code 610, are you there? What is your name, and where are you calling from? Hello, guys. Hello. Todd, Todd. From Pennsylvania. Hey, hello. You're nearby in Pennsylvania. In fact, Athena's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I'm in New York, and, and Athena's right there in Pennsylvania. Yep, cool. I sure am. So is there something in particular that you want to uh, talk to us about, or you want um, a mini reading on the air? How can we help you today? What can we do? Um, you know, I hear a lot of things, like, in different sorts of ways. It's not, like, abnormal to me. And um, something annoying started, like, earlier today. I was opening up Ty Lopez's, like, 67-step videos, and I was listening to his teachings, and I'm not sure what triggered it, but um, I seem to be hearing, like, different, like, annoying instruments or, like, different, like, sorts of, like, 
I, I used to hear it before, like maybe a year or two or three before, like I heard the same thing. It, it's like reminds me of jazz or band, and it's very annoying. Okay, that's that's interesting because I um, I am picking up that you are you are very psychic and intuitive. And yeah. have you ever have you ever tried to train that ability by reading the cards or working with the pendulum or any of the different tools that are out there? A little bit. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was getting that same sense that there's there's something that uh, maybe you can find out that thing that that's annoying you, find out what it is, and sort of maybe meditate on it because it might be a message for you. It sounds like you're definitely opening yourself to, you know, a lot of energies around you. Um, I the only thing I know is that I'm gonna move out of this house for the first time in like a long time. And it's my only thing, and I'm also planning to like give a few hundred dollars to my uh, advisor, um, or psychic advisor, and um, that's the only two things. And I remember like the last time it happened, I had to like quit this organization I was in or like back out of it or plan to back out and tell them I'm backing out and it stopped bothering me. Um I, I don't I'm not in the organization right now. I don't know why it's coming back. Okay. Well, you know, we um this show is about, you know, creating uh things in our lives and I always say to people, what what would you like to see happen? And then we can just kind of draw a card on that. What What do you What would you like to to manifest? I just wish I could have some like comfort and peace and clarity with what's happening about this uh, sound. This uh, this big film or the sound? I'm not sure. Like the annoying sounds. Yeah. Have you? Hmm. Have, well, have you tried like uh, putting earplugs in and just like doing a countdown from ten to one to just sort of calm the quietness inside? Um, I tried many things like decades before, like a decade before. I tried a lot of things and. You know, I even looked it up, like, even deaf people can hear hallucinations. Like, it was pointless to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Do you like jazz? You know, the funny thing is, um, maybe many months ago, like, I was kind of in with jazz, and I was like, wow, this jazzy uh, thing uh, suits my, like, personality and um I was on the live chat uh with uh the jazz like video that was live. Like I would go down there go on there and I would um chat with the people and stuff. Mhm. Yeah. Because yeah. what I'm what I'm picking up on is kind of the same thing that Athena's picking up on. Uh there's some there you need to like meditate on this because it's trying to tell you something. And um the two messages that I'm getting from spirit is one, um, you need to develop you have like psych you have you have psychic psychic ability. And you really, you know, you wanna maybe read some books on it. You really kinda wanna get into it because Things are speaking to you, and they're telling you things. And the other message that I'm getting is one that I'm getting from Archangel Gabriel, and it's about, it says that there's something that you believe in, and you need to have confidence in it and claim your personal power. So if you can kind of 
think about if there's something that you always wanted to do, but you were afraid to do it, this could be a message from spirit that um, you need to investigate that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I hope that, I do hope that helped, um, you know, and just stay in touch with us and um, good luck with the, the move. You're going to be moving, you said. Um, yep. So um, good luck with that. I think that um, that it's going to be a good move and yes. uh, you need to stop worrying about it. You know, if there's if there's any worry that you're having, you need to uh, release those worries. You need to release any feelings of regret or guilt that that you're feeling, and you can move move forward. And I see good things for you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm going to put you back in the queue so you can listen in. And wow, I saw so many positive things for her. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a yeah, it's such a new awareness. I'm not sure if she wants me to pick her up or, or not. I'm going to try one more time. Uh, she's calling okay. from area code 646. Are you there, caller? Hello? Yes, I am. Hey, you sound familiar. <laughs> I didn't understand hey. the first time. I was, I was into. I'm coloring a mandala right now, and I'm, I'm like really into it <laughs> while I'm listening to you. So, yeah. How you doing? What is your name? What's your first name? You know my name. It's Ruth Ann. Yeah, I know, but you're live and on the air. This is a. I know. We know this lady. It's the awesome Ruth Ann. How you doing today? I'm doing fine. Cool. So you Good. said you're coloring a mandala? Awesome. Yeah, I, I have this mandala book that I got at some kind of a yard sale. It's called the Mystical Mandala Coloring Book from the Dover Company. Oh, cool. It was published in 20, um, 2007. And I'm working on one, and I, I discovered that when you were talking about, uh, you know, how to do the colors and stuff, I always find myself putting colors that wouldn't normally go together. Oh, wow. You know, colors that might clash or you would never wear certain colors together. Hmm. So I just put all kinds of colors in, and this is looking very Mediterranean to me right now. (laughs) Oh, nice. Cool. That's nice. So what colors are you using? You know, I mean, we don't. Unfortunately, we can't see the see the colors. So tell us which ones you're using. Well, I started out with um, a red, and then I added a mahogany color, which was closer, very close to the red. Then I added some green and uh, a vermilion, kind of an orange vermilion color. Mm-hmm. Then I have mm-hmm. uh, a deep blue. And then a, a kind of a golden yellow, and then a soft gold. So oh, nice. I'm on That's the nice. Ones. I might, yeah, I might throw a surprise color in at the end. You know, <laughs> to see what happens. Could I, I have a question. When you started coloring, did did you realize where you started? Did you start coloring from the center out, or did you start on the outer parts of the mandala? Well. I started sort of in the center, but not all the way in because, you know, there's this little thing in the center and then it just spreads out until it comes to the to the outside. So what did oh, I actually start with? I started with these just these little uh, kind of like little dot looking things that were mm-hmm. uh, that were sort of in the center, but not all the way in the center. Mm-hmm. So I'm like halfway through the labyrinth is basically where I am. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Do you want us to pull a card for you? Sure. I forgot okay. to pull one today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll pull one for you and uh, give you a reading for uh, just a one-card reading. 
Yeah. Are you? Okay. I'll let you go first, Athena. Okay. I pulled the Page of Wands, which is really, it's like fun. It's like the card of fun. For me, it's like the card of fun, the uh, card of, like, you know, having fun with new enterprises, um, just doing, like, really being active, you know. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I could see that, you know, or, um, you know, hearing, like, you know, some high-energy projects or things that are going to be taking place. And, you know, even though we're all basically in a virtual world now, we still are engaged in highly active things, you know, whether it's, like, doing, like, yoga online or, or just even, like, you know, exercising or something online. So I see this as um, something you're going to be engaging in some activities. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can think yeah. of a few activities that could be coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what did you What did you get, Sharona? Well, I actually ended up pulling three cards. Uh, oh. The first oh. card that I got <laughs> is the Six of Swords. I'm going to tell I I know that um, because people can't see the cards and um, I love this card it's kind of almost like for all of us now because it's about the light at the end of the tunnel and being able to uh, you know have a sigh of relief and make new plans because I certainly think you know we're all with this whole thing that's going on where we're all sheltering inside, uh, we're saying, when is this going to be um, moving onward? And it also talks about, you know, being able to to travel more. So I got that, and then I always like do, what card is crossing that? And I have uh, here the Six of Pentacles. So you're going to be... Uh, coming into money and yep. you know you get you're going to get money so i mean don't be surprised if you uh, will end up using that money to do uh, maybe some traveling and it's just saying in the and then i'm getting the two of wands that and that's all about you know like it's a person who's looking at a globe and making plans you know you know, plans where he's going to um, be able to travel beyond where he is right now. So I, I'm i getting, I see travel coming up for you, money coming in to do that, and I'm seeing that, you know, all of this things that we're going through, it's going to it's gonna eventually um, pass. So yeah. I don't know whether you were thinking about travel, but that's what I'm getting. Well, there was some travel that, you know, it didn't happen due to uh, the situation we're all in right now. So maybe that will the travel will happen a little bit later. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. And we're you know, so uh, not not to worry. You know, you're you're going to travel again. So that's going to be good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we are coming toward the end of the show. So, Uh-oh. Ruthanne, I'm just going to put you back. You want to, if you, if, is there anything else that you'd like to add to the discussion about coloring? Any well, other I comments? One last thing: coloring in itself is a really nice, um, calming activity, and the coloring mandala. Um, to be a little more specific, it, it really is. It does get into your um, your head. And you start thinking things, and a lot of spirituality starts coming through. And um, I also, I always find that the colors start talking to me and start telling me where they want to go. So, oh, wow. That's great. That's, wow. that's, that's great. I like that. I like that's, that. I, uh, you, I think you said the, uh, Rufian, I think you said the most interesting uh, thing today. You know about talking to your colors and your crayons and everything, and they will tell you where they want to go. That's that's like being psychic and getting into <laughs> synchronicity. I love that. 
Oh, awesome. thank you yeah. for that reading. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining thank us. You. I'm going to put you back in the queue so you can listen to us. And we are, Athena, you know, we're kind of moving toward yeah. the end of the hour. So okay. I just want to remind everyone uh, there's going to be more shows that you can call into next week. Um, if we weren't able to give you a reading, uh, you can call in um, to the shows that are on Monday, and there'll be a show on Friday that you can call in and another one on Saturday. But this show, Magic Universe with Sharona, will be back in two weeks. So remember, that's going to be on Sunday, May the 24th at 2 p.m. Eastern, and I'm going to be talking about how you can raise your vibrations, especially if you use essential oils. But I'm also going to be talking about why you want to raise your vibrations. But I'll let you in on the hint. When you color, you raise your vibrations. And when Absolutely. you do that, yeah, I mean, it's all about you. if you raise happy vibrations, that's what you attract to your, yourself. So I guess I'm going to tell everyone, uh, this is your magic mama. I'm Sharona Rapsick, and I do want to thank my guest, Athena Dugan, for joining me. Thank you for joining us. You thank were you. awesome. Thanks. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And oh. I also want to thank my listeners you know, I want to thank each one of you for joining me today because, you know what, we wouldn't have a show if you weren't there uh, listing as part of our family. And I always like to remind everyone uh, that you want to focus on po- what's positive in your life because guess what happens? We are magnetic. So when you focus on what's positive, you are going to attract more positive situations in your life. And this is how it works because we live in a magical universe. So it's all about keeping your energy high and your vibrations high. So until we meet again, which will be on Sunday, May 24th, I want you to know that I am wishing each one of you countless blessings and good energy. And I love you all. I love you, Athena. Love you, too. Cool. Woohoo! Bye, everyone. <laughs> hey, Thank bye-bye. you.